Well, today, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, you're here again in Boston, Kentucky, but also today we're having the Mass of the Solemnity of the Feast of St. Pius X. It was September the 3rd, a couple days ago, it's the Feast of St. Pius X, principal patron of our Society of St. Pius X. And so today we have the Mass of the Solemnity of St. Pius X, the Pope who died in 1914, Pope from 1903 to 1914, uh, 11 years Pope and one of the most important popes in the history of our church. And today is feast, and also the principal patron of our society, St. Pius X. The epistle for the feast of St. Pius X is taken, and also we, the young adult gathering today, also I pray with young adults that they benefit from the grace of God on the little gathering we're having here uh, in Kentucky this Labor Day weekend. And then after the Mass, we'll have the, the dinner and then we'll head out to town uh, into Shepherdsville and Louisville afterwards. The uh, epistle is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul of Thessalonians, chapter 2. Brethren, we had confidence in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God in much for carefulness. For our exhortation was not of error, nor of uncleanness, nor in deceit. But as we were approved by God, that the gospel should be committed to us. Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, who proveth our hearts. For neither have we used at any time the speech of flattery, as you know, nor taken an occasion of covetousness, God is witness, nor sought we glory of men, neither of you nor of others. Whereas we might have had been burdensome to you, as the apostles of Christ, but we became little ones in the midst of you, as if a nurse should cherish her children. So desirous of you, we would gladly impart unto you not only the gospel of God, but also our own souls, because you were become most dear to us. And then the gospel. Taking that according to St. John chapter 21. At that time Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me more than these? He saith to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith to him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again, Simon, the son of John, lovest thou me? He saith to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith to him, Feed my lambs. He said him the third time, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said to him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And he said to him, Feed my sheep. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. A few considerations. In the situation of the church and what to do about it. St. Pius X was in a very similar situation in which we are today, back in 1903. It had to be a very bad time in the history of our world, a very bad time in the history of the church, that at that time what happened? At that time, a Mason, follower of Satan, was elected Pope by the cardinals that gathered together in the most important meeting to choose the successor of St. Peter. It was all rigged well in advance. Rampola was to be elected Pope. In order to rig this, so many things had to happen. How do you get a Mason and a Satanist to be elected Pope in the Holy Mother Church? Unless there are already many Masons and many Satanists in the hierarchy of the church and throughout the church trying to destroy it. And how is the world ready to accept such a one? Unless it is already exceedingly corrupt. The boat of the church had holes in it everywhere. The boat of the church was in a toss by the seas with massive holes on the side, holes everywhere, the mass broken. 
It was a destroyed ship that was barely afloat in the sea of sin and the sea of the world. And then Giuseppe Sarto became the successor of St. Peter. Rampola's election was vetoed, and all the wicked cardinals had to get together and say, we can't elect the man we want. Let's pick an old man. Let's pick one easy to deceive. Let's pick an idiot. Let's pick someone that can easily be controlled and won't reign, reign long and doesn't know anything about politics. When he was on his way to the conclave, he met a French cardinal. And the cardinal said, who are you? I am Cardinal Giuseppe Sarto. What are you the cardinal of? I am a cardinal of Venice. So, oh. Well then, uh, do you speak French? He says, no. Born and raised in Italy, I only speak Italian. Well, you can never be Pope. Hmm? Pope must speak French. And they went into the conclave. Rampola was vetoed. And they retreated back and said, what are we going to do? They said, well, there is this pious man who is not very intelligent, who knows not the ways of the world. He was a simple curate, a simple parish priest. He had to go through all the hard way through the hierarchy of the church, one way or another. Even recently, he had given money to a mason who was his main enemy and wanted to kill him. The man is crazy. And so they elected him, 55 out of 60 votes. Get, get this man in. No one can complain about this pious man who won't cause any trouble. But what happened? He did not wish to be pope. But he said, if this must be, then I take up my cross. And he took it up. Now, what did he see in the church that was around him in 1903? He saw drowning sheep. He saw drowning shepherds. He saw a ship that was wrecked in every way. He saw the law of the church in disarray. He saw the structure of the church in damage in every way. He saw infiltrators in the church on every side. He saw Satan everywhere, and Satan was everywhere. He took up a motto. And what was his motto? In serare omnia in Christo. He looked at the world around him and saw all things are fallen apart. All things are decayed. All things are ruined. All things are finished. So all we have to do is restore all things. It's very simple. Very similar to today. All things are a mess. Every word that proceedeth from the news is a lie. Every idea they have is either a direct heresy or profoundly stupid and always wrong. And everything in the world today is a total mess. And the family is ripped apart. And the ch church is ripped apart. And society is ripped apart in every, say, every, every, every way. They're even trying to defund the police. Every single thing is ripped apart. So what do we have to do? Some will say, there are so many things to do. Where do we begin? Giuseppe Sarto stood at the highest place in the world, in the city of Rome. He looked around 360 degrees, and he saw that everything was a mess. What do you do first? Everything Everything. We're often told that if you're going to build a house, first, clean away the dirt. Second, fix the foundation. Lay the foundation. Next, build walls. 
Then put on a ceiling and a roof. What if you live in a house and it gets hit by three direct nuclear hits and all kinds of machine guns pass through, the bullets pass through the wall, and the whole house is ripped from top to bottom? What do you fix? Everything. Now, they tell you that it's impossible. St. Pius X, as he took on the name of Pius X, was pope for only 11 years. During those 11 years, the old man did more work than all the popes in 700 years before him combined. He was busy. One of the greatest works that he did was a work that popes have been thinking about doing for a thousand years, and that's fixing the cumbersome, impossible uh, law of the church. Because there are laws of every diocese, laws of every country, laws of every district, laws of every apostolic area. There are laws all over the place, written some 2,000 years ago, some 1,000 years ago, some laws supplanting other laws and other laws. A man to be a canon lawyer would have to study a 1,000 books. He wouldn't even know the names of all the books to read, much less the laws contained in them. And law was a mess. Where we're going to fix law. He fixed the law of the church. No other pope in history was able to do it. In one law, one small book, 2,500 and something canons, repaired the entire law of the church. He looked around his office and he saw that there are many, and there are many, cons many consistories of men that are supposed to help the pope. And the consistories, they are a mess. He reorganized every single one of them. While this was going on, just a few miles south, the mountain of Vesuvius blew up. And there was another uh, the, uh, volcano in the area of Pompeii. He repaired all the damage. <laughs> raise funds to take care, rebuild all the homes and to take care of all the sick and put everyone back at work and back in their homes at the same time. Turns out they were trying to steal all the churches in France. They were trying to implement the complete choking out of the papacy in Italy. They were trying to destroy the Catholic Church everywhere in Europe. And at the same time, he went out and taught catechism to children in the Vatican Gardens. Told all the priests throughout the world that they must teach the catechism to their flock and commanded catechism to be taught everywhere and had catechism printed in every language throughout the whole world. Commanded every parish priest to do it. Told the bishops you have rotten books in your dioceses. You have rotten books in your, in your seminaries. Burn them. You have bad teachers. Kick them out. You will make sure you put Catholic men inside of your monasteries, Catholic men inside of your seminaries. And they decided they were going to take away the freedom of the church in France. And he told the French government, take the churches. We will not stop saying the masses. And I am the Holy Father. I am the representative of our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of a tailor from a small town near Venice. And I rule the church in France. You Masons, go home. I will decide who is the bishop of the diocese. I will decide who is the pastor. And what about the missions? Missions in the United States, in South America, and Asia. We established more than 40 dioceses and patriarchates, established bishops. Spread the faith everywhere. Took care of the sick and took care of the poor. So the answer to modernism, which is he called one, one name. There are so many errors, so many heresies, so many lies. How can you deal with them all? So he dealt with them all, every one, by writing the encyclical Pascendi in 1907. 
And what does it begin with? The duty of the shepherd is to feed the flock of Christ. I did not ask to be the shepherd of this holy church, but I must feed the flock of Christ. And they are being fed poison from the littlest child up to the oldest and wisest cardinal and bishop. And we will rip out the poison and we will feed them with the holy doctrine of truth and we will tell them from whence the poison comes. The poison comes from the modern world. <clears throat> the poison comes from Satan. <clears throat> the poison comes from a heresy which we will give by one title. And we will explain how what seems to be many lies is only one lie. And what seems to be many false doctrines is actually only one false doctrine. It is a grand sewer and the collection of all heresies. He did not combat only some heresies, as the popes before him, he battled all heresies. And so he wrote his encyclical Pashendi, and he didn't do it by just writing a nice book. He commanded the bishops to throw out modernists. He said, if you find liberal men inside your seminary, toss them out. You will make sure that the faith is that as a centerpiece and they must understand the truth. For the reason why heresy spreads throughout the church, the reason why lies are believed everywhere in the world, it is because Catholics don't know the truth, not because there are liars. They will always be liars. But if you do not know the truth, you will believe the lie. And therefore, there must be a communication of the truth to all Catholics. They will know how many gods there are, that there is only one God and three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Son became man, died on the cross for our sins, established his holy church, and gave a command to the holy shepherd Peter, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And he fed them with holy doctrine. You also recognize that if you're going to combat Satan, you must eat the faith. As Daniel once did in the Old Testament, as St. John was required to do, and all of us are supposed to do each time we receive the holy and blessed sacrament. We not only consume the body and blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, we consume the truth. Because St. Pius X recognized truth is not an idea. Truth is flesh. Truth is reality. Truth is everywhere around us. And the lie is a tearing apart of reality. A lie is violence. And truth is real. And whoever wants to know truth, whoever wants to hold truth, let him consume the truth. And hence, Holy Communion must be given to children at a very young age, before they have been corrupted by impurity and by immorality and by lies. Therefore, they receive Holy Communion at a very young age. One of those young boys who was given Holy Communion at the age of five, while St. Pius X was the Pope, was a young boy by the name of Marcel Lefebvre. He wrote his very first letter that he would ever write. He wrote a letter to the Holy Father and said, Holy Father, I am most grateful that you let me receive Jesus Christ at an early age. And he never let go of him. And he was filled with the fire to carry Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And from whence came that fire that was inside of Marcel Lefebvre? It came from Giuseppe Sarto, St. Pius X. And hence, when he would found his society called the Apostles of Jesus and Mary in 1970, 
he would make the principal patron of this of these apostles of Jesus and Mary, Pius X. And why? Because when Marcel of Fevre, the holy archbishop, looked at the world that he was in, what did he see? He looked around 360 degrees and he saw that all things, omnia, all things are corrupted. All things have fallen down. And therefore, let's get busy restoring all things. Let us restore all things. When you can take a car and put it inside of the shop, you can fix the brakes if you want. You can fix the lock. You can change out spark plugs and raise it up on the little jack and fix things in any order you want. But if you're in a submarine and the captain learns that there are 37.5 holes in the side of the submarine, you better fix 37.5 holes. And you better fix them right now. You don't fix the big one first, the small ones later. You got to fix them all. It's impossible, isn't it? Giuseppe Sarto fixed the entire Catholic Church, every single part of it, from top to bottom, in his old age, having no experience in the ways of the world, but experience only in the ways of Christ, having no confidence in the ways of the world, having confidence only in the ways of Christ. And he defeated the modernists. He delayed Vatican II by over 50 years. Even the modernists themselves said, this, this tailor from, from uh, Riese, he has destroyed us. The work of hundreds of years he has torn down and with the whole world working of Masons and Satanists, it'll take us at least 50 years to undo the damage that man did. And so it did. The Council of Vatican II was ready to happen in 1903. He fixed the whole church, repaired every hole, saved countless souls for the next 50 years laid the foundations of the answer to the modernism that would come back in full force in Vatican II, 51 years after he died. And we have the answer to the problems of the crisis of the church today in Giuseppe Sarto in St. Pius X. And we must understand that when we look at the world today in 2020, what do we see? 360 degrees. Omnia, all things are collapsed. All things are broken. Therefore, we must fix them all. He fixed the chant in the church. He fixed the rubrics. He fixed the canon law. He fixed the workings of the family. He fixed the dioceses. He took care of the sick and the poor. He taught the simple catechism. He made confession available to the youngest and Holy Communion. He fought governments in Italy and governments in France and governments in South America and governments all over the world and defeated all of them at the same time. He was busy feeding the flock of Christ and defending the flock of Christ against all its enemies, great and small. And just and Marcel Lefebvre, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, saw that we must do the same thing and hence, when he founded the Apostles of Jesus and Mary, our order, which is the Society of St. Pius X, what is our order all about? He simply said one thing, priesthood. We are priests, and we are about priesthood. And all things that priesthood is about. And what is priesthood about? Priesthood is about taking all things, omnia, that are in this world, sprinkling holy water upon them and driving out Satan from all things, collecting all things together in ordered and structured manner that they might give glory to God 
and to bring all things from heaven and all blessings from heaven down to earth to be a channel of grace by which heaven's graces come down to earth through the hands of the priest into all souls and all things. We are to work with the poor and the sick and the ignorant and the wise and all the ones that are in between. We are to work with all institutions. The governments must submit to Christ and the lemonade stands must submit to Christ. And the individuals living in the streets must submit to Christ. And all families must submit to Christ. And all civilizations in every level must submit to Christ. And they are all falling apart because they do not have him. Hence, what do we do? We tell young men, be men. Believe the true faith. And don't dress like a faggot. And young girls, be ready to be mothers. Be ready to teach catechism to your children. And by the way, don't dress like a lesbian. And be sure that you wear a dress every day. We have to tell you that. Wear a dress. Two fingers below the knees. <laughs> we got to wear a dress. Let it walk like a girl. The girl, guys have to learn how to walk like a man. They'll learn how to speak like a man and think like a man. We cannot tell you that you must only believe in Jesus. We cannot tell you you must only accept the Catholic faith. We have to tell you that you should use the boys' room. They don't know that. It is necessary to say everything because everything has collapsed. We must tell girls that an important part of life is to eat food. This means you must learn how to cook. Try it sometime. What does a Jewish mother make for dinner? Reservations. Try something else. We have to be able to say that when should you cook well, people often eat on a daily basis, especially those of us that need more supplies. <laughs> and that, therefore, food should be cooked every single stinking day. We also have to say that part of believing in Jesus and part of worshiping God and part of having the Holy Communion is that when you go home, you should have something called a, a dining room table. Now, the reason why there's a table, often it has chairs around it. In the time of Christ, you lay on the floor. We don't have that custom anymore. You only do that when you're watching TV, which, by the way, you need to throw out. <laughs> so if you're going to restore all things in Christ, try buying uh, chairs, the kind you can put under a dining room table, and then try sitting at the table, try this one, with the other members of your family at the same time. Try it sometime. I remember the first time I remember seeing one other large family when I was a child. I had 15 kids. And they had a table that sat four. And it was never full. Because mommy was busy taking care of other things. And they didn't know that you're supposed to eat together. Girls are supposed to be girls. Women are supposed to be able to cook. Men are supposed to use their brain first you got to get one then you got to start trying to learn how to use it and then we got to be able to restore all things in christ you can't blame everything on hillary you can't blame everything on obama we must restore all things in christ everything at the same time hence we have to plug every hole Preaching the retreats, many of our priests preaching the retreats. They don't just preach the retreat, they have to cook. <laughs> every single thing must be done. And St. Pius X went into every part of the ship as it was sinking, and he plugged every hole. And he fixed the mast. He restored all things simultaneously. Fix this, fix that, fix the other thing. He did not say, first I will fix the canon law. They've been doing that for a thousand years. They'll have a five-year plan. First five years and fix canon law. 
Second five years, I'm going to fix the consistories. The next five years, we're going to work on the sacraments. The next five years, no. Every moment, fighting the Italian wicked government, fighting the Masons all around him, fighting the French, fighting the Germans, fighting the, the, the souls in South America, combating the heretics within the church, combating the wicked cardinals, the wicked books, combating the wicked printing presses. He fought them all at the same time. And then at the same time as he was fighting them, he was building, physically building churches, physically building dioceses, physically building hospitals and soup kitchens, physically taking care of the sick and the dying. And while he was doing that, he was building up souls, teaching catechism also to children, as he did from the time he was born into priest until the time that he died. And all the time, he liked home cooking. He didn't allow the nuns to cook for him. His three sisters took care of him from the time he was ordained a priest until the time he died. When he became bishop, they moved into the bishop's house. When he became pope, they moved into Rome. Three sisters knew what to cook for him. They knew how to fix his cassock. He didn't have time to worry about that. So the three sisters took care of him. His three his sisters were never married. Three of his sisters never, never married and took care of him all their li all his life. And after he died, they also died. Every detail he took care of, and we must take care of every detail also. Hence, we are the Society of St. Pius X, the apostles of Jesus and Mary. And this means we must restore all things in Christ. Take every soul, no matter how far it is from Christ, and try to pu pull it to Christ in every way. And take all the parts of the world that are against Christ and pull them together in every way. And we will not only give doctrine, we will make sure that we give Ignatian retreats and make sure that we drag souls to Christ by means of this. We will lay the foundations for schools. We will lay the foundations to get Catholic men inside of the government and Catholic men inside of the workplace. We will let there be marriages in which there will be Catholics who will raise their children in Christ. And the girls will learn how to be mothers and how to cook and how to wear a dress. And men will learn how to be males eventually. And that they are going to help each other become men. The women will help the man be a man. The man will help the woman be a woman. And they will work together in the spreading of the kingdom of Christ in every single way. In every single detail. All things. Not most things. Not some things. We will not fight the important things first, the unimportant things second, but all things. And somehow, Christ will pull all things together. And we also know this is the right spirit. For what reason also? Because the Blessed Virgin Mary said, when she brings about, when the Pope finally obeys heaven and consecrates Russia to the Macca Heart of Mary, there will be a massive conversion of the whole world <clears throat> after Russia. That means the whole world will have to go from anti-Christ in every detail to Christ in every detail. And hence the priests, the missionaries, they must know everything. The Jesuits, what do they do in South America? <clears throat> and the greatest Catholic civilization ever created, the reductions. <clears throat> the Jesuits were being attacked by wicked Portuguese leaders. And what do they do? They formed an army. The Jesuits generaled the army, and they taught the Indians how to whack Portuguese. And guess what happened? The Portuguese lost because you don't fight with a real Jesuit of the old type before they became modernists, the Jesuits of St. Ignatius. They restored all things. They studied the dress. They studied the customs. They made sure that Christ was in every single way. They taught the children how to sing. And they taught the children how to shoot cannons at bad people. They taught the, 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 them how to farm. They taught them how to build houses, how to build civilization, and how to put bad guys in prison and chop their heads off. <laughs> The fact is, they taught them everything, and they built an entire Catholic civilization. And it's interesting that there are many non-Catholics in the 20th century writing about the greatest civilization that ever was, the one created by the disciples of St. Ignatius in South America. There was no more ordered, no more peaceful, no more perfect civilization in the history of time, the one created by Jesuits in the 1700s in South America. They built entire civilization. They took those people who, who were eating their own babies, those people who were living in, in a, an absolute life of complete ignorance away from Christ, and they made them the most civilized people on earth. And they made them able to combat wickedness and to stand. And how were they defeated? 
They were defeated by the Pope. He was the Pope that said, Jesuits, you are suppressed. And it was the Pope that said, Jesuits, get out of South America. And it was the Pope that said to the Portuguese in answer to Plumbal, who now burns in hell, we will see that the Jesuits are gone. And the Jesuits were kicked out of, of Portugal. They were kicked out of the Philippines. They were kicked out of all of Asia. And who brought about their defeat? The Holy Father. The defeat did not come from the Masons. The defeat did not come from the outside. It came from our own troops. Hence, in our present battle, we must recognize that we are going to restore all things in Christ, and that means also our Holy Mother, the Church. It means also the parishes and the dioceses and the congregations of all types. They must all be restored in Christ, and we will not follow their wickedness, and we will follow the spirit of Cluny back in the 800s. When St. Odo founded the Cluny in the year 810, he recognized this monastery will not only be a Benedictine monastery, but it will restore France, and will restore all the Catholic Church, and we are not going to obey wicked leaders and their wicked commands. We will be independent, and we will fight for Christ, and eventually our men will become Pope, and St. Gregory VII from Cluny became one of the greatest popes before St. Pius X in the 1100s, and he also restored all things in Christ in a most wicked time. We have to do the same thing in our time. We are not here only to survive. We are here to conquer the world for Christ and how much of it? All of it. We are here to conquer every aspect of the family, every aspect of the parish, every aspect of the world for Christ. That's what we're here for. We want He who is the truth that we consume. When we receive the Blessed Sacrament, we consume the truth. This truth we must be transformed into. For this is a food that we are transferred into the food. When you eat other foods... The food is transferred into us. It is changed into us. When we eat the Blessed Sacrament, we are meant to be transported into and changed into Christ and be more and more Christ-like. And He is the way. There's no other way. He is the truth and He is the life. And there is no path except the destruction today. There is only lie and there is no life. How do we answer the lie of the modern world? How do we answer the death of the modern world? How do we answer the, the, the false journey of the modern world towards perdition? By the way, the truth, and the life that must be in every part of our being. And hence, when we receive the Blessed Sacrament in union with Christ, it must transform us completely and prepare us for the great victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is about to come when all things shall be restored in Christ. Nothing will be left missing. Let us bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.